Hello, my name is Piet van der Graaf, and it is my pleasure to present a summary of my talk, Quantitative Systems Pharmacology, Past, Present and Future, based on the keynote lecture I gave at a recent UK QSP Network Symposium celebrating its 10th anniversary. Quantitative Systems Pharmacology, or QSP, started to emerge as a new discipline within the broader Model Informed Drug Development, MIDD, approach just over 10 years ago, as illustrated by this paper from Pfizer from that time. The initial focus of QSP was on target selection in early research in an attempt to tackle phase two attrition due to lack of efficacy, which at the time was running below 20%. Two key publications that helped define the scope and approach of QSP were the so-called Three Pillar Paper from 2012, shown on the left, and the NIH White Paper from 2011, shown on the right. The Three Pillar Paper laid out the framework to build confidence in the compound-specific pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic characteristics and quantitative tools to demonstrate target exposure, engagement and modulation. The NIH white paper coupled this to approaches from systems biology to build confidence in the biological target, pathway and mechanism of action. Regulatory agencies, in particular the US Food and Drug Administration FDA, have embraced QSP in recent years. For example, this graph shows how the number of FDA submissions supported by QSP has increased year on year since it first emerged 10 years ago. Interestingly, the FDA analysis shows that the majority of regulatory QSP submissions, almost three quarters, are focused on clinical application, mainly supporting dose and dose regimen selection. Another emerging regulatory application of QSP is in pediatrics, as illustrated by this recent example from the European Medicines Agency, EMA, where it was used to support bridging for Zenpozyme in acid sphingomyelinase deficiency, ASMD, from adults based on mechanistic disease similarity. These examples from FDA and EMA show how the focus of QSP has evolved from preclinical target evaluation to a much broader application in clinical development, with an emphasis on dose selection, biomarker selection and interpretation, and, as I will show later, increasingly prediction of clinical endpoints. I will now illustrate the impact of QSP in these three key areas of drug development with four recent case studies of novel multi-specific modalities, immuno-oncology, Alzheimer's disease, and lastly, inflammatory bowel disease. The utility of QSP in human dose selection for bi- and multi-specific antibodies is nicely illustrated by this recent paper from GenMap, who developed a mechanistic model to determine the recommended phase two dose for apcoritumab a CD3, CD20 bispecific antibody. The authors justified this novel approach, which integrated preclinical and clinical pharmacokinetics, biomarkers, tumor and response data from the dose escalation part of the phase 1-2 trial on the basis that traditional dose PK response modeling methods may not adequately predict the complex dose exposure response relationship for bispecific antibodies. Therefore, trimer formation predicted by the mechanistic model instead of actual clinical measures was used to guide dose selection. At Cetara, we have used a similar approach to support more than 20 bi- and multi-specific programs for a variety of pharma and biotech companies, increasingly as integral parts of IND submissions. In a recent case study, Following successful submission of an IND supported by our QSP model, our client fed back to us that six months earlier they had submitted a similar IND without a QSP model. 
and that due to the QSP model, they could start two dose levels higher in the first in human study. A similar example from a collaboration with another company will be presented at the American Society of Hematology ASH annual meeting later this year. We are now increasingly using a very similar approach for another rapidly growing class of novel modalities, targeted protein degraders, which are now starting to enter clinical development. The second key application of QSP I highlighted earlier is selection and interpretation of biomarkers. One disease area where we are seeing rapid adoption of a QSP informed biomarker approach is in oncology. Various analyses, exemplified by these two papers, have shown that the probability of success in oncology, which is amongst the lowest across therapeutic areas, can be increased significantly up to fivefold by the use of biomarkers. Arguably, the main catalyst is FDA's Project Optimus, which aims to reform dose optimization and selection in early clinical developments, which we and others believe will rely heavily on the use of biomarkers. A key question therefore is how to select and validate biomarkers in a timely manner such that they can be applied with confidence for decision making in early oncology dose finding studies. This has been a main focus of the Immuno-Oncology IO QSP Consortium, which Satara established in 2017 and has now involved eight major pharma companies and well over a hundred multidisciplinary scientists and clinicians. The consortium has been developing the IO Simulator, which is the industry leading QSP platform for IO drug developments. The IO Simulator can be applied in a modular manner to address key questions at different stages of drug discovery and development, including the selection of biomarkers, as I will show in the next slide. The IO Simulator can simulate time course profiles of some 15 endogenous cytokines in tumor and plasma from mono and combination therapies in virtual trials comprising a large number of individual virtual patients. We can map these biomarker profiles onto the actual clinical responses for each virtual patient, as shown here for IL-12 as biomarker and the sum of target lesion diameters, SLD, as clinical endpoints, displayed in the usual waterfall plots. The SLD outcome for this virtual trial was calibrated with the actual data from the keynote pembrolizumab clinical trial. And what you can see is that if we map the QSP model predicted IL-12 levels in plasma onto this, we start to see a clear separation between the responders and non-responders at approximately three months. This suggests that plasma IL-12 can be used as a predictive biomarker and early indicator of clinical response. We have done a similar analysis for many other potential biomarkers and recently presented these results to FDA, who appear to share our enthusiasm for this novel approach and also our view that QSP can be a key enabler for Project Optimus. In summary, Project Optimus aims to improve dose optimization and dose selection in early oncology developments. Biomarkers will have to play a key role in this new paradigm. And QSP is ideally placed to guide biomarker selection and link these to dose predictions in a learn and confirm manner. Besides IO, we have developed QSP platform models for various other therapeutic areas and diseases over many years at Satara. Our Alzheimer disease platform provides another recent compelling case study how QSP can identify biomarkers to predict outcomes ahead of actual clinical data being available. As described in this paper, we published together with our pharma partner, ESI. Briefly, in a similar manner, 
as we were able to link IL-12 to clinical outcomes in the previous case study in IO, we applied our Alzheimer model, which is based on a detailed description of amyloid aggregation in brain, to address the question if lecanemab's unique pharmacological profile was sufficient basis to expect a better clinical outcome compared to the many amyloid antibodies that had failed previously. Since we were asked to make this prediction ahead of the completion of the actual clinical study, I would propose that QSP was the only rational approach available to answer this question at that stage. Indeed, more than a year before the positive phase 3 data for lecanemab became available, ESI presented results obtained with our QSP platform, which predicted that lecanemab would demonstrate greater clinical efficacy in Alzheimer patients compared to apparently similar amyloid antibodies, such as aducanemab and gantanirumab, which showed similar effects on one of the key measured biomarkers, SUVR, as shown in the left panel. What makes the QSP model unique is that it can also predict currently inaccessible biomarkers. In this case, amyloid protofibrils, which are believed to be a key player in Alzheimer's disease pathology. The simulations on the right show that the QSP model predicted a much greater effect of lecanemab compared to other therapies, which we hypothesized was the basis for its superior clinical profile. At the recent Alzheimer Association International Conference, we presented how this validated platform can now be used to guide amyloid antibody treatment regimens, in particular to balance efficacy with the most pronounced and serious class side effect, ARIA-E. What we also presented at this meeting, shown on the right, is how the platform can be extended to assess the utility of alternative biomarkers, such as tau proteins, and evaluate novel mechanisms of actions beyond direct amyloid inhibition. In the examples I have shown so far for Alzheimer's disease and oncology, our platforms can link biomarkers to clinical response in a mechanistic manner. In essence, we couple two QSP models. However, this is often not possible, specifically when clinical endpoints are comprised of qualitative subjective scores. An example of this is inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, where disease activity is expressed using soft endpoints, like the Mayo score. The next and last case study shows how we have developed a novel approach for these common scenarios by integrating QSP models with AI and machine learning. Briefly, we developed a mechanistic QSP model of IBD based on a detailed biological map of key cell types, disease mediators and biomarkers in blood and gut. The output of the QSP model was subsequently linked to clinical endpoints, such as the Mayo score using machine learning. The integrated platform was calibrated with clinical data from known therapies, such as adalimumab and mirikizumab, as shown here for the Mayo endoscopic score, MES. The calibrated model could then be used to simulate virtual trials, in this case showing how results from published trials could be improved by increasing dose and or adding a second therapy, indicated by the percent improvement in clinical response depicted by the colored arrows. Excitingly, we are now using this approach with clients to assess complete novel targets for IBD at very early stages of development to guide portfolio prioritization. A more detailed overview of this approach is freely available as a recorded YouTube webinar. We are now expanding this novel approach to other therapeutic areas and diseases, leveraging our existing QSP platforms, Satara's new state-of-the-art layer AI platform, 
and our propriety codex database, which contains curated clinical studies for some 60 diseases. This is what the integrated AI QSP platform looks like, combining our technology at the level of data sources, where the codex database can of course be enriched by internal company data, integration and visualization and analytics. The seamless integration of QSP models into this platform is achieved through our newly developed QSP designer software. QSP Designer is described in detail in this recent publication, and I would like to highlight three features which capture main trends in the field in general. QSP as a collaborative discipline involving a variety of stakeholders, reusability of models, and thirdly, integration of QSP with physiologically based pharmacokinetics, PBPK. With regards to the first point, QSP Designer is an example of a software with an intuitive graphical interface that allows for close and continuous involvement of non-modelers, such as biologists and clinicians in model building and development. The second feature, model reusability, addresses a common concern that the longer term return on investment in developing QSP models and the ability to reuse and develop them over time could be dependent on the choice of a particular software or coding language, in particular since there is currently no commonly agreed single standard. QSP Designer addresses this by allowing export of models to a variety of popular coding languages, the list of which is regularly reviewed and updated. Such a feature also facilitates regulatory submissions of QSP models, which, as I discussed earlier, is becoming more common. Lastly, a recent trend we have observed is that companies are increasingly looking to couple QSP and PBPK models, which can now be achieved in a seamless manner within the SimSip Designer platform. In summary, in this brief overview, I have covered the emergence and evolution of QSP in the past 10 years, a period in which we have witnessed a remarkable growth of the discipline, and QSP has now become an integral part of model-informed drug developments to guide decision-making. With the evolution of QSP as a discipline, we have seen a shift towards clinical application, and I foresee that this trend will continue with the most recent developments around integration of QSP with AI and machine learning approaches. Today, I've only had time to discuss a few case studies in oncology, Alzheimer's and inflammatory bowel disease. But as you can see here, we have developed similar QSP platforms for numerous other diseases, pathways and modalities. And please feel free to contact me or any of my Satara colleagues in case you would like to discuss how QSP could support your programs.